Sophie. From four very different perspectives. On the crazy and unpredictable world of professional wrestling, as a pure theory creations entertainment network presents a live interactive show where you can be part of a conversation of all things professional wrestling, from the major leagues to the independents. This is Fatal Four Way Live on Owen TV. And we welcome you to a very special edition of the Fatal 4-Way live here on ONTV. This is what we have all been waiting for. The biggest weekend of the year, if you are a wrestling fan, is upon us. We thank you so much for taking time out of your holiday weekend to be a part of our show here. And you can call in and be a part of the conversation live, but we ask that you turn the volume down on your end and we keep the dialogue around the APG rating. With that being said, I'm being joined by Hollywood Q, Sean Grugel, and Brian Ball, theoretically. But we will hear from Brian here in a little bit, but taking his place, even though you can't see him, may or may not be the one John Cena. Now, we have a lot to talk about here tonight. We're breaking down both nights of WrestleMania 40. But before we do, Sean, we're going to do your segment real quick with the independent roundup with the a quick list of the upcoming events in and around the area. Holy, look, I got my own graphic now. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. All right, so we're going to do the indie roundup. We're going to go real quick. I'm going to talk like the Micro Machines guy. Uh, you, if you want to know real quick uh, about these shows, jump to the Fatal 4-Way Facebook page. I have them listed there as well. So let's get started. Tonight at 7.30, Pro Wrestling All-Stars presents uh, Wrestling for Pedro at the American Legion Hall in Taylor, Michigan. The main event is the Great Tiger and the Great Akuma versus the Threat with Nate Madsen, Briar Wellington, and Steve Rivera for the Pro Wrestling All-Stars Tag Team titles. April 11th. Uh, 7 p.m. Combat One Wrestling. This one's going to be huge, fellas. This is the Wrestlerama Super Fight at the Rollerama Family Skating Center in uh, Brighton, Michigan. The main event is Matt Riddle versus Austin Aries. You got notable names like Jackson Stone, Atrocity Cruel, Tommy Vendetta, the Detroit Red Wings Zone, Darren McCarty, Austin Aries, and Matt Riddle. You can check them out at purplepass.com backslash superfight. April 12th, New Edge Pro Wrestling presents the Rock City Rumble at the American Legion Hall in Taylor, Michigan, with the main event being Adam Wick versus Kenny Steele for the heavyweight title. April 13th, Pure Pro Wrestling at the Capitol Sports Fieldhouse in Owasso, Michigan. The main event is Gideon Malice versus Casey Lambert for the Michigan State Heavyweight Championship. Notable names on that card are Impact Zone Jack Price. Check them out at pureprowrestling.net. April 13th, Super Shogun Wrestling at 7 o'clock at the Dragon's Den in West Branch, Michigan. The main event is the Red Tiger versus Jacob Braun for the Shogun Heavyweight title. April 13th, there's like five shows on April 13th. You got UWE Pro Wrestling as they present April Foolishness at the Cadillac National Guard Armory in Cadillac, Michigan. Their main event is a last man standing match as UWE champion Jamie Race versus Mike Idol in a title versus career match. Check them out at UWEProWrestling.com. April 13th, UCW Wrestling in uh, Saginaw. You, they present live pro wrestling. The main event is Justin Main versus Ren Jones in a two out of three falls match. Check them out at UltimateChampionshipWrestling.com. April 14th, Independence Pro Wrestling, 6, 6 p.m. at Ruggers Up and Under in Kalamazoo, Michigan. You have a barbed wire match in the main event, Jeff King versus Josh Raymond. And Josh Raymond is from MTV's Wrestling Society X. So that's a throwback for sure. No kidding. Uh, April 14th, CIW Wrestling presents Carnage Combat at the St. Clement Hall in Toledo, Ohio. This is a Michigan promotion going to Toledo. That's why it's here. Uh, the main event is the Soul Taker versus Papa Dingo. And then a six-man tag match. It's a double main event. The Warriors Way uh, versus Michael Elgin, Calvin Coco, and Big Country. Notable name, Michael Elgin. 
April 20th, Imperial Wrestling Entertainment presents Spring Showdown at the Artesian News Center in Houghton Lake, Michigan. Check them out at IWEGladiators.com. April 20th, Metro Pro Wrestling, Chronic Chaos, hosted by the Guru at the Down River Council for the Arts in Wyandotte, Michigan. Uh, you have Impact's own Jason Hotch, who's the champion here, versus Jake Oman. And April 21st, Capital Pro Wrestling at the Fledge in Lansing, Michigan. Orlando Christopher versus Keith Cream. And August 20, or I'm sorry, April 24th, Independence Pro Wrestling presents Defiance at the Four Star Theater in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Like I said, I talked real fast. Check out all these shows on the Fatal 4-Way Facebook page where you can get all your information there because we got WrestleMania to break down, folks. And it happens, it starts live tomorrow night, part of a two-night spectacular. Go ahead and take your breath. Yeah, drink some water. We'll take over for a minute or two. Joe, get the defibrillator. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, from top to bottom, this has gone down. This is being built as one of the most anticipated WrestleManias in recent memory, Q. Would, would you agree with that? Oh, yeah. There's a lot of hype behind it, man. I'm excited. You guys are excited. Everyone out there is excited. I mean, the buzz is hot right now. The product is hot right now. They're selling out shows. They're selling out live shows. They're selling out all kind of different venues. There's a lot going on, man. I'm, the buzz is hot. It really is. Lincoln Financial Field in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania is hosting this thing. And let's talk about... I mean, right out of the gate, the world women's title match between Rhea Ripley and Becky Lynch. Now, we do not know what the order or the lineup of, of the matches are. We just know what matches are happening on what night. But you talk about the buildup for, for these matches, and Rhea Ripley and Becky Lynch have done a pretty decent job, especially when you compare it to the WWE women's title match between Bailey and Io Sky, and we'll get to that later. But Ripley and Lynch is really a, a grudge match that this title really needed, right? Oh, absolutely. And I feel like this this title match actually is getting a little bit more shine than Bailey and Io, which I'm actually more excited for that one. But uh yeah, this one is really getting a lot of buzz. Becky's she's a big she's a big star, you know, she's a big star. You know, might not be. I know my counterpart here is not the biggest fan of Miss Lynch, but I believe she's gonna she's gonna she's gonna perform. And 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 I believe because of the fact that this is a contract year for this lady, so it's going to be a big night. Now I'm not picking her to win though. I I would hope not because then I would have to reevaluate our friendship. But be that as it may. Sean, uh, Rhea Ripley has really become one of the faces of WWE. T to me, I look at this as a must-win match for her. Uh, in the event that she would lose the, the title to Becky Lynch, what does that do for her star power, if anything? I think it'll drop her immediately. Fact of the matter is, is Becky doesn't need this win. She's established herself as you know a future Women's Hall of Famer. Rhea needs this. She needs that stepping stone to reach that pinnacle, to reach the top of the mountain, so to speak. And eventually, I want to see uh, Rhea Ripley versus Bailey, title for title. Yeah, absolutely. I I have maintained that. I don't think that they really need two women's titles here. I understand why they they have done this. Mm -hmm. You know, one for each brand. I get it. But then you throw the NXT women's title in there. It's like, man, can we just kind of consolidate so I'm uh, I'm with you on that um, Rhea Ripley and Becky Lynch would who's your pick on this I'm going with big Rhea uh, yeah. mommy I'm going with mommy oh it has to be mommy yeah yeah yep. I that I would have to to uh, 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 I would have to fall in line with that and agree uh, we will be hearing from Brian Balf here in a little bit and he will uh, give us his predictions as well. I kind of feel like I have an idea of, of where he's going to land yeah. on this, but yeah. be that as it may. All right, moving ahead uh, for, Saturday, for Saturday night's card is a big tag team match that has been added to the card. Rey Mysterio, the Hall of Famer, is going to team up with Dragon Lee to take on Dom Dom and uh, Escobar. And this is going to be... Uh, by all accounts, this should be a decent tag team match if you are into Lucha Libre, if you're into the high flying spots like this. Um, I'm kind of, I was kind of su surprised that they put this match on the card because we saw 
father versus son last year, but you know, here we are again. It is a tag team match, and this has the potential to really establish Dominic as the breakout star of this match. Ray has had his moment. Dragon Lee is coming on to his own, but I don't think he's on fire on the same level as Dom Dom is. Would, would you agree with that, Hollywood? Oh, I definitely agree with that. I'm, I'm glad they put Dom Dom on the card. I was getting a little, uh, a little nervous because, uh, you know, Dom Dom, he really grew on me, man. He's like, his character and, you know, his character work has, the, has really developed. He's got out of the Mysterio shadow, you know, he's he he's his own little guy, you yeah. know, and I like that, you know. <laughs> I, I love that for him, and even you know Escobar getting a little bit of shine too. So you know, good for him. Santos as Escobar and Dragon Lee are really in a unique spot here for for this show. They they are on the biggest stage against. Two of the bigger names, especially with Rey Mysterio being a Hall of Famer and everything. Everybody knows everything about Rey Mysterio. But what does this do for Dragon Lee and, and, and Escobar? Can they live up to this kind of exposure? I, I think you're focusing on the wrong thing, honestly. Uh, this isn't about Dom Dom and Escobar and Dragon Lee. This is all about Carlito, and this is going to be about his heel turn and Dominic becoming the new leader of the LSW or L L W O. Well, hot take. Hot take right there. All right, I, Watch out for that LSW. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, well, we have a call coming in, and, it, and if you want to be a part of the conversation, you can join us at 810-331-2829, um, but they hung up, so that's cool. All right, <laughs> it, it can't go wrong if it's live, folks. Uh, wh who are you picking in this? Um, Dom Dom and Santos with interference from Carlito. Q? I'm, uh, I'm with you there. Dom Dom and Escobar. You know, I hadn't really thought about the Carlito aspect, and I was just l l I was looking at this match as this was going to be that real pivotal launching point for Dominic to really, I mean, he's more than escaped the shadow of his dad, but to finally become a legit contender to the United States or Intercontinental Championships. I looked, that's what I, I looked at this match, but I'm going with Dom Dom and Santos Escobar. Now, um, ladder matches have become a tradition of sorts for WrestleMania, and we've seen some doozies. Well, there was the creation of Money in the Bank, which has become its own pay-per-view at this point. This year, they've more than upped the ante, and I'll be quite honest with you, I'm not really sure how I feel about it. We have a six-team ladder match for the undisputed WWE Tag Team Championship. The defending champions are Damian Priest and Finn Balor. They will be challenged by the Awesome Truth, DIY, The New Day, uh, Tyler Bate and Pete Dunn and Austin Theory and, and uh, Waller. Now, A Town Down Under. Yeah. God, what a horrible name. A Town Down Under. I understand the concept of getting all these guys on WrestleMania. And this has been a source of contention for a lot of fans here who all makes the card. This is going to be the biggest ladder match in WrestleMania history in terms of the number of participants. Q, I'll ask you first. Yes, the tag team titles are on the line, but is this just way too much, or is this going to be the match that ultimately steals night one? I don't think it's going to steal anything, but uh, it's, it's just going to be a spot fest. You're going to see probably like 10 guys on the outside of the ring laid, or out, laid out around the ring wide while the other guys do their little spots and then they're going to interchange and take turns, you know, get a ladder and jump off of it and do some kind of cartwheels and stuff like that. <laughs> it's going it's, it's, it's to be uh, that, that car crash. This is the car crash match of the night. Uh, there's a lot that's going on here. I mean, to me, you had the story with Truth and Miz, and now you just kind of like blended everything together. Yeah, It's like putting everything in that blender, man. They're about, they about to hit the button. You know, there, there's guys that are involved in this match, Sean, that we, we, we look at it on the paper and it's like, 
do they should they be in the spot when there's other tag teams that you could have made a strong case for that really should have if they were going to go this route they like the street profits are the first ones that come to mind right right so yeah. there's other teams that could have really benefited fr from this but it's almost like with all these guys happening with because a lot of these guys are known for their theatrics from jumping off their high you know all the high spots and the flips and stuff like that new day you you never know what kofi kingston is going to do in this thing anytime you get kofi around a ladder things are are unpredictable here right. but um you know we've we used a word on on um, on the hot tag a cluster when you deal with a match like this a cluster what I, listen, this is PG, pal. <laughs> a flub. Yeah. A, a, a cluster flub. <laughs> what What do you expect out of this match, and will we see new champions, or are the Judgment Day going to maintain the, the stranglehold? I look at this card, and I see a whole lot of guys that need a whole lot of push that aren't going to get it because... None of them are as over as Judgment Day. Right. Um, Judgment Day needs this win. Uh, I don't think a lot of people are really buying into this whole shtick, especially if Dominic splits from them, uh, you know, at the previous match that we were talking mm -hmm. about, you know, because you do got that inner turmoil as to who's the leader. I think Dom is going to emerge as the leader. Damian Priest, this could be, this actually could be the downfall of Judgment Day. You know, if Damian Priest cashes in his money in the bank here at WrestleMania, right. I mean, who knows? If I was to pick someone other than the Judgment Day, as much as I hate to say it, say I, it. I, the, the New Day <laughs> needs it. The New Day needs it more than anybody else on this card. That really surprises me that you would say that because I know you're not a real big fan of the New Day. I'm not. I'm not. But you see where they were when they were with Big E. Without Big E, they seem to have lost their way. Uh, so right. they, they, they need it. I, I think the fans would want to see Miz and Truth, the awesome truth, go over. Um, but New Day needs it realistically. If I got my choice, it would obviously be uh, A-Town Down Under. See, that would be my pick, yeah. Q, because you were, you look at, at the guys in this match, a lot of people are all about the DIY tag team of, of Gargano and, and, and Champa, and I understand that. But it really, for me, if we're going to establish new stars, the few, they have the future right here in front of them with Austin Perry and Grayson Waller, and I'm afraid that if they don't emerge from this match as tag team champions, because they would be my pick as well, yeah. um, they're going to get lost in the shuffle. I'm afraid. Do you see this being a thing? And who is you? Who do you see walking out of here or being carried out or whatever the case may be <laughs> as the as the tag team champions? Uh, you know, I actually agree with you about uh, Austin Theory and. Uh, Grayson Waller. I think they do need it because they're lost now. I mean, <laughs> they. Yeah. it seems like, you know, they just kind of like put these two guys who are somewhat similar. I think Austin Theory is actually a better, or Grayson Waller is a better Austin Theory than Austin Theory is. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So they just put those two guys together, you know. Uh, so, and, and there's one more element that we, uh, that was added to this match. I know on Monday, Michael Cole said that this match will continue until both sets are, of titles are pulled down. So we can very well see two teams split, split the titles. Yeah, they're going to split the titles in this match. And uh, that needs to happen. Yeah, I th yeah, and I think this is, this is the time to do it. If you don't do it now, then win, you know. So uh, I can see Austin Theory and, and uh, uh, Grayson Waller getting a set. That other set, I believe, will go to Truth and Miz, and I think it's going to be kind of like similar to, I don't know if you remember the, the, the it was a six-man ladder match for the Intercontinental title when Zack Ryder yeah. won, and that reign was like a cup of coffee, you know, so I think well, he lost it the next night. The next so, night, yeah. yeah, so when he got done with his coffee, he didn't have his title anymore, <laughs> so, so I think this is, this is what we're going to see with Miz and Truth, because they, no, to be honest, nobody wants to see them have a true reign. Nobody really cares about the Miz like that. 
But they we do want our troop to yeah. have that yeah. moment. He never won at WrestleMania, so this is his chance to get that moment. And then they can just take the titles off from him on Monday. You know, and that was a focal point on Monday night. They 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 mentioned that a couple of times that Truth had never won at WrestleMania. And look, the guy we we've talked about him on the podcast. We've talked about him here on this show. The dude is a treasure, mm-hmm. and he's he almost un- lost his leg. Yeah. You know, he he is underutilized and underappreciated, and I feel like now, now is the time to strike when the iron's hot. They have had so many opportunities in the past with other guys. They are hotter than 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 anything, and they don't pull the trigger on them for what for whatever reason. You can't do that with an R truth, man, because the guy has put his time in, and I would. And it, I'm glad you, you, that you said that about what, what Cole had said about retrieving both sets of the Tag Team Championship because I heard that. I'm like, ooh, they're, they're going to split the titles, which I think does need to happen. Make, and new title belts need, need to be made. Please. But that's, that's a whole other story. <laughs> it makes you think like a, a Edge and Christian Hardy Boys finish where you're going to see one member from each team hanging off the belts and fall at the same time, and they're going to have to say, Okay, this team gets this belt, and this team gets th- this set of belts. I don't know it's if I want to see Truth hanging off today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm scared for his life, man. Yeah. <laughs> L- L- little Jimmy will catch him. <laughs> All right. Um, another multi-person match that is scheduled to take place on Saturday, WrestleMania Night 1, will be kind of an all-star team on both sides. Um, the, I... I'm actually looking forward to this match. Of all the women's matches at <laughs> WrestleMania this weekend, this may low-key be the one I'm looking forward to most because there's a lot of question marks uh, with Jade Cargill. Uh, she will be teaming up with Naomi and Bianca Belair to take on Damage Control. And now, I'm going to tell you right now, and I'll go ahead and say it. If Jade... Naomi and Bianca do not win this match. <laughs> <laughs> I like s- something is wrong because there's so much hype around Jade Cargill right now. And not only that, I don't ever since the split with Bailey and damage control, I feel like this faction is on borrowed time. Yes, the women's tag team titles are part of the group. I get that. Yes, Asuka is part of it, who is one of my favorite women wrestlers of all time at this point. But to me, um, number one, I expect a a good match. I feel like uh, Bianca and Naomi are going to really step it up a little bit to to shadow any uh, shortcomings that Jade may have. This is her second match in WWE. First was the Royal Rumble, now it's at WrestleMania. Um, Sean, what what do you see happening here in, in this match? I see Dakota Kai getting pinned and the rest of Damage Control turning on her as well. Because I, she's definitely been the weakest link throughout all this. She hasn't done, in my opinion, done nothing to deserve a spot on WrestleMania. She was injured for the longest time and then was like a third wheel even when Bailey was managing Damage Control. Um, so I... Jade gets the pin for sure, and the big, the big WrestleMania pop. Okay, what do you think, Hollywood? That was very easy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, Jade is definitely getting a pin. Uh, I rather, I, I, I kind of wish it was a tag team match for the, uh, for the actual titles. You yeah. Know? Uh, but I'm happy for Dakota. She was out for a long time, but uh, I kind of think they need Dakota a little bit more because. Uh, She's the only one that speaks English. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> I feel bad for, I feel bad for Asuka. She's not going to get her win at WrestleMania. Her, her reverse Undertaker streak is still going on. Terrible. Terrible. Bianca continues her undefeated streak, you know, and, but, you know, she would have still had a streak if she would have uh, challenged for the tag titles because that would have been another title match for her but uh of course give it to the 
Give it to the strong ladies, you know, them strong. Uh, Jay looks like a million bucks, she man. Really does. You see her on SmackDown, the entrance, the presentation of her, man, and she's, she's. I think she's cocky in real life. So actually, know. all three women on the left are amazing. Yes, they are. Yes, and they, they are. look like stars. They do. They carry yeah. themselves as stars. Not to say that. The other side of the equation d does not, but there, there's, that, the other side, there's yeah. that it factor that really stands out between the, the two teams here. Uh, and one more time, if you want to be a part of the conversation, you can call in the show live, 810-331-2829. Moving along here for, for the Saturday portion of WrestleMania, for the Third time in WrestleMania history, we will see real life brother versus brother. This is a match that has been in the making for quite some time. Jimmy Uso and the main event, Jay Uso, are going to go one on one here, Q. A lot of people are speculating this match could be the one that steals the show. I think, uh, you know, they could have done a little bit more with the buildup. I mean, I, but they also relied heavily on the story kind of writes itself. Yeah. Just as the bloodline thing has, has played out here. And Jay Uso moving over to SmackDown, split it, splitting the team up. Um, I'm going to go on record here and uh, the unpopular choice, but I think that this is the one where Jimmy Uso needs this victory. You know, there's been so much hype on Jay Uso, especially with the whole main event moniker and the way he's been positioned on Monday Night Raw. Jimmy's kind of still in that secondary role on SmackDown as part of the bloodline. I really feel like if the bloodline is going to remain anything, after WrestleMania, Jimmy Uso needs this match, Sean. I'm going to go polar opposite of you. I'm going to say Jay Uso is going to win, and I. But my reason is this: is tonight they announced uh, Jimmy, or I'm sorry, Jay versus Solo. Yeah. I think in this match tonight you're going to see uh, Jimmy jump in the match, attack Jay, which is going to upset Solo, and then night one at WrestleMania, Solo will turn on Jimmy, and turn face. And join with his brother Jay. What do you think, man? You, That's you a... are the plot twist king, <laughs> <laughs> man. You know, I didn't think about all that, uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, I, I was actually uh, picking Jimmy. And to me, this build has been overshadowed by The Rock. Yeah, for sure. This build right here. This is a. One build that was really overshadowed by The Rock, you know, uh, this is brother versus brother. This is a match that they dreamed of, so I believe that they're going to really put on quite the show. Maybe we won't see too many super kicks. Who knows? But uh, I think Jimmy needs it more, you know, this yeah. is before I heard the plot twist. But this, <laughs> I, I really believe that Jimmy needs this win because he's kind of been cast as the joke, you know. He's still waiting on his high five. Yeah, right. Right. He hasn't gotten his high five from Solo. Yeah. His hand is still out there. <laughs> <laughs> left him hanging. He left him hanging. I mean, okay, we're going to go on a, a roll fast sidebar here because Solo Sokoa, the fact that he is not on this card in a match is a absolute travesty. They should... And we can say the same thing about the Andre the Giant Battle Royal because they could have at least put him in the Andre the Giant Battle Royal, which happens on SmackDown here tonight. But why are they not pulling the trigger on Solo? Why is he being utilized only as the henchman? And I realize that's his role. That's how he's been p positioned. I get that. But this kid has got something, mm -hmm. and if you give him the opportunity, he is going. He is going to go where Yokozuna went with, with, within time. He's got that talent, Sean. Do, do you agree or no? Oh, I absolutely agree. There, he's so underutilized, and like you said, Q, he's everything's been so overshadowed by The Rock that he's kind of gotten lost in the shuffle. You know. Not for not. I'm not speaking for Brian, but I'm going to. He just said there's no need for bloodline rules if they all turn faces by night two. But you still have Jimmy, no yeet. You still have possibly The Rock. You still have, you know, them defending Roman. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, and other family members. Uh, yeah. We haven't seen yet. 
Right. <laughs> we we talked about this last night, Q, in 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 a private conversation. There there's guys within the within the Edgeville family that have not made it to to WWE yet. And if you're gonna do it, you might as well do it on the biggest stage of them all. That's right. So uh so you're going Jimmy? I'm going Jimmy. And you're going Jay. I'm going Jay. Okay. Yeah, bloodline just isn't what we see on TV. That's true. That's true. I'm I'm going to maintain that my pick is going to be for for Jimmy. I just I would love to see him have this win, much like Owen Hart had when he beat Bret the Hitman Hart, gentlemen, back at, at WrestleMania 10. Um, that was the opening, probably the greatest opening match in WrestleMania history. And then of course. The Hardys had had their match at WrestleMania 25, yeah. and now here we are at 40 with with the Usos. So, all right. right. Hopefully, there's hopefully this match is more like Owen and Brett, and not like the Hardys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. All right. Um, up next, this match that we're going to talk about here for the Saturday portion of WrestleMania. If this match is any longer than the entrances. They have messed up. <laughs> the Intercontinental Championship is going to be on the line when Gunther puts the title on the line against Sami Zayn, the guy who has been positioned as the ultimate underdog. Like I said, if we if we are going to incorporate any sense of reality in, in into this <laughs> thing, it has to be with this match. Gunther is the most dominant intercontinental champion of all time one of the dominant stars in all of wwe he gets sammy Zayn here at wrestlemania q i i i would have been almost better with ricochet in this spot (laughs) and anybody i know anybody that knows how i feel about ricochet that's a pretty powerful statement but here we are man where where does sammy Zayn? stand a chance in this match of leaving with the Intercontinental Championship. Nope. Okay. Moving on. But, <laughs> <laughs> but hear me out. Yeah, hear man. me out. Hear yeah. me out. Okay. To me, this is more of a Chad Gable story. This is more of a Chad Gable story, and I think he's going, going to be involved. Not a heel turn. I hear a lot of people say heel turn. If you turn him heel, then you pretty much kill off the story with his daughter and all that stuff. But I believe... If anyone watches movies and they remember Rocky IV, I believe that Sami Zayn is in the Apollo Creed (laughs) (laughs) part of the story to where, I mean, Gunther is beating the tar off of this guy. I mean, chopping chopping the hair (laughs) off of his chest. I mean, like, I want to see this guy get beat so bad. And then you got Chad Gable out there with the towel. You got Chad Gable out there with the towel, you know, throw in the towel, Chad. He, he throws in the, cha- the towel, the towel, match is over. Sami Zayn loses. You see Gunther standing over his body. If he dies, if he <laughs> dies. <laughs> I'm telling you, that's what I want. They're in Philadelphia. <laughs> you know that St- Stallone is going to do the code open, hopefully. You know, oh. so uh, I, th- this is the story I want to see. There's... This story is not for Sami Zayn to win. He's been Intercontinental Champion. I feel like this is a almost a step in a s- vertical line for him. Like he's in the same. He should he she should be doing other stuff. I mean, this is not for him. Give me the Rocky story. I sit here and I think about where Gunther was last year at this time. Getting ready to put his Intercontinental Championship on the line against Sheamus and Drew McIntyre. Arguably the hardest hitting match of the entire weekend across all three brands. Raw, SmackDown, and NXT. Okay. Here we are a year later on the 40th anniversary of the grand of of the granddaddy of them all. And we have Guther. The most dominant champion in, I mean, not named Roman Reigns, and Sami Zayn. Sean, what are we doing? I'm just going to go with Q's storyline. I like that. <laughs> okay. That's it. <laughs> but it has to happen within 30 seconds. Yeah. The whole thing. 
<laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. The entrances should be longer than the match itself. Right. It should and be like one chop, Chad throws in the towel, it's over with. So <laughs> that way we can move on to the main event. I would love, I, I would actually love to see just a one sided 90 second domination from Gunther. Yeah, I would love to see that as well. Yeah. He, he hasn't had that yet, really, on any grand stage. Right. He needs flush. that to show his dominance. Yep. Yeah. And, then, you know, we've talked about across our airwaves just, I mean, the future is so bright for this guy. And, you know, we have all kind of low-key pegged him. You know, by the end of the year, he's going to be either world heavyweight champion or universal champion, at least in my opinion. But let's talk about both champions here in WWE because they will be on opposite sides of a big tag team match that will close out night one on Saturday. One of the most anticipated tag team matches, one of the most anticipated main events in WrestleMania history. You will see Roman Reigns, the undisputed Universal Champion, and The Rock will team up to take on World Heavyweight Champion Seth Fr freaking Rollins and the American Nightmare Cody Rhodes. A lot of stipulations in this, gentlemen. Uh, you know, what happens on Sunday will have a direct result because of this match. If Rollins and Codes wins, or Codes, if Codes. Rollins and Rhodes win, the then Cody will get a fair shot with no outside interference against Reigns on Sunday. However, if Rock and Roman win. It is bloodline rules on Sunday when Cody has his shot at the Universal Championship and Roman Reigns, which means there are no rules. Sean, we have seen every WrestleMania since the first one in 1985 at the Garden in New York, which was highlighted by an epic tag team match that people still talk about to this day. Where does this one rank with that? I don't think it's going to be much of a tag team match. I, I think it's going to wind up being a handicap match. And the reason why I'm saying that is Seth Rollins' ego. I think Seth Rollins has been secretly carrying a grudge against Cody for not going after him for the heavyweight championship. I think he's going to turn on Cody. I don't know if it's going to be he's going to drill Cody and walk away or if he's just going to walk away. But he has to save himself for his match against Drew McIntyre at night, too. Right. He has to look out for himself. So where does it rank? I think the hype is way up there. I mean, WrestleMania 40 is one of the biggest, hottest, highly promoted WrestleManias I've ever seen. But because Cody Rhodes in it, right, me, uh, that's going to be my bathroom break. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you're picking uh, Rock and Roman? Well, yeah, because like, I'm going to speak for Brian. He said it best on uh, the hot tag the other day. No one wants to see a straight one-on-one -on -one match with Cody versus Roman. And like we talked about earlier, I think we're going to see more bloodline than the bloodline that we're currently seeing. So I think this is going to be bigger than what people are expecting on night two. What do you think here, Keel? Sounds like an NWO invasion. <laughs> uh, yeah, this this is a this is gonna be another match that's gonna have a lot of uh, time on those entrances right there. I mean, we're talking about like it's gonna be like a half hour I before they get to the ring. That, yeah, a half an hour of entrances. For this yeah, for sure. but uh, so, so a straight Undertaker entrance. Oh, oh man! For <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> this guy. <laughs> yeah, but uh. It's definitely, I, I, I give it to Rock and, uh, and Roman. This is, this is the Rock's first match back in, uh, I'll say 12 years. I don't count that Rowan match. But uh, this is his first match back. He's getting him a W. You know, he's on the board now. And, 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 and just like you were saying, we need to see that bloodline rules. And what we did see, we seen a teaser on Raw. That was them teasing it on Raw. So they're not going to tease it on Raw and not give us give it to us on the main show. Right. Um, okay. So it looks like uh, that is what the, yeah, acknowledge the tribal chief for sure. Listen, what we're going to do right now, we are going to run a quick timeout. And when we come back here live on the Fatal 4-Way, joining us remotely 
uh, via telephone will be the Stan Lee of PFC, Brian Ball, and we will break down night two of WrestleMania 40. We will be back with more of the Fatal 4-Way right after this. All About Connections is a 90-minute suicide prevention training hosted by the North Oakland Community Coalition. This training uses the QPR method to educate and prepare participants to recognize warning signs of suicidal ideation and supply resources to their friends and family. We offer All About Connections to strengthen our bonds and ensure the Lake Orion community is fully supported by the people around them. We are available for ages 14 and up and can customize your training to your group. Whether it is a business owner and their employees or a group of parents with their future college students, this is a great opportunity to connect with one another and build confidence that everyone is prepared to help their friends and family in a crisis. If you would like to schedule a training or learn more about All About Connections, email Jill McCollum at jmccollum at nocmi.org. This is WWE Hall of Famer Tito Santana giving a shout out to Sean, Jason, Brian, and Q. Asked of me by some anonymous fan. Wonder who that is. So, you guys, Sean, Jason, Brian, and Q, are long lifelong wrestling fans and you have started a fan interactive call in wrestling discussion show on on tv called the fatal four way there is no doubt that you guys have something good going and i want to wish you nothing but the best with this adventure I want to congratulate every one of you. Everybody has a job to do. So, just like Nike, just do it, my friends. Good luck. Arriba! 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 <laughs> awesome to hear from WWE Hall of Famer Tito Santana. And as a special bonus here tonight, we have a trivia question that you can win an autographed card of Tito Santana, courtesy of our friends over at Plastic Planet in downtown Lapeer, Michigan. We certainly appreciate that. So here is the trivia question, and you can call in w with your answer. W one more time, that number is 810-331-2829. Or you can send us a text either to the ONTV feed of this show or to, you can text the number, of 3312829. So here is the trivia question. Tito Santana wrestled in the first eight WrestleManias. He was actually in the very first match of WrestleMania. Who was his opponent at WrestleMania 1? Who was Tito S Santana's opponent at WrestleMania 1? The first one with the answer will win an autograph card, a trading card, very cool, of, of Tito Santana. Now, Joining us via telephone is the fourth member of our panel here, the Brian Lee. Or the God. Brian Lee. What well, it actually is, <laughs> Brian Lee. It is Brian Lee. The Stan Lee of PFC. <laughs> Brian Balf is joining us. He was unable to be in the studio here tonight, but it was important that he be a part of the show. Brian, how's it going, brother? It's going awesome. How you guys doing? Good, Great. good. So you, I'm sure you uh, heard us break down night one of WrestleMania. Yeah. Uh, of those matches, what are the, what are, the, are some of the things that you are expecting to take place uh, as part of WrestleMania Saturday? Uh, right off the bat, like the Santos Dominic match. I mean, I felt like Sean just read my notes. I was like, I see a future LWO led by Dominic in a Carlito interference. So, boom. Uh, when you guys were talking about Bianca, Naomi, and uh, Jade, the only way I see them losing that match is if they're already pulling the trigger and Jade turns on Bianca and they stop that dude. Makes sense. 
Brian, you're uh, wrong. It wasn't I, Shockmaster. Yeah, but, it wasn't? Dang it. All right. Uh, <laughs> uh, so the six-pack pack match, I have the exact same picks as uh, Q. I see it's going to be – I think it's going to be split. I think it's going to be Awesome Truth and Eight Talent Down Under. But I see it as a typical R-Truth moment where he climbs the ladder, abstracts one of them, celebrates for too long, and then, bam, gets knocked off. <laughs> I like it. I like it. <laughs> yeah, I, I can see that playing out for, for sure. Um, I, I, I had Jimmy winning because I feel like we're going to get a, a, a bloodline-dominated day one. So, Jimmy, okay. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. What yeah, about... I mean, obviously... Right. What about Rhea Ripley and Becky Lynch? I, I hope it's a 30-second smash. I hope Rhea destroys her. I don't think we'll see that, but... I, my only question to that is, who is Rhea going to face next? I feel like she's ran through the whole division. Yeah, Liv Morgan waiting. <laughs> so... What is wrong Literally with you? Tag team partners forever? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Liv Morgan. <laughs> All right. So, with with your concept of a of a bloodline heavy night one, I assume we're we're all in agreement. It's going to be Rock and Roman. Yeah, I, I think actually, I think Seth might get injured in that match, which may lead us into him losing day two. And I honestly, I, I think we're going to definitely see the Rock pin Cody, so that we might have the possibility of that feud later on. There's been a lot of speculation that this is that. where where this is going to head eventually. Going into the su- summer months, could very well be the main event for su- for SummerSlam. You know, assuming Cody Rhodes wins the title on Sunday. So uh, we haven't tackled s- Sunday's card yet, Brian, but we'll, we'll go down the matches real quick. We'll, we'll get your take on it, and then we'll, yeah. we'll break it down as more callers can, can call in t- to the show here. But we have a six-man tag team match with Lashley and the Street Profits against the, the Final Testament. Who, who's, who's your pick in that? I, I'm going to go Final Testament. I think we need to see Bobby and the Street Profits lose. I think we see MVP come back soon. And I think we're going to see the Hurt Business 2.0. Oh, good. Yeah, we, we've talked about that but before. Um, L- L.A. Knight and A.J. Styles. Uh, L.A. Knight, I, I think we're going to see the L.A. Knight-Logan Paul match at SummerSlam in Logan's hometown of Cleveland. And I, I feel like we're going to see L.A. Knight holding that belt real quick. Right. Um, all right, uh, so Eo Sky and Bailey for the WWE women's title. I think we finally get Bailey's WrestleMania moment where she ends up winning. Yeah, for sure. She's long overdue. We'll we'll talk more about that here in a little bit. The triple threat match for the United States title. Yeah, I kinda gave that away, but I definitely see uh, Logan Paul winning that so yeah. he can drop that US championship belt at SummerSlam. Uh, <clears throat> Seth Rollins and Drew McIntyre for the World Heavyweight Championship. Uh, I'm going to go Drew. I think Drew's going to take the belt off of him. Like I said, I, I think we might see a hurt Seth coming off of day one. And I uh, see Seth getting that time to actually heal his real injuries. And then we get to see that uh, Drew McIntyre CM Punk feud. And Roman Reigns and Cody Rhodes. Ugh, God. <laughs> I think we have to say uh, Codes is going to win it, as Jason would call him. I think, uh, but I, I think uh, what Keith said the last time we were on the show, I think this will be an uh, Avengers Endgame type scenario where we just see so many run ins. But I don't think anyone will get to the ring. I don't think we see anything in the thing in the actual match. I think it's all going to be outside of the ring, basically preventing people from interfering in the match. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. There, I mean, there's just so many ways they they could go about this. Uh, so many m- moving parts. But we appreciate you taking time out. I know you've got a big event that that you're going to with with your lovely wife uh, th- this evening. So we wanted to say yeah. thanks for for calling in into the show, uh, Brian Balf, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, you, you he's usually right there in that chair. 
uh, for our show. He will be back here next or on the next episode in <laughs> two <Jimmy>. weeks. Uh, <laughs> Brian, thanks so, so much, brother. All right. No problem. You guys have a blast. Yeah, we'll do. We'll we'll talk to you soon. Have yeah, fun, brother. Yeah, we'll be texting Saturday and Sunday, I'm sure. Oh yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. All right, man. We'll we'll talk right, to you. Have fun, guys. All right, bye. And I'm gonna be in the right thread. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's break down the, the WrestleMania s Sunday card real quick. Like like we said, a um a six man tag team match is going to take place with Bobby Lashley. And the Street Profits uh, taking on the trio of the authors of Pain and Carrying Cross, known as Final Testament. Real quick, Hollywood, where, where are we going with this? All right, so this is the car crash match of night two. And uh, it's a toss up for me. But uh, I'm going to go Bobby and Street Profits on this one. It is a Philadelphia street fight, which means there's no rules in this match. Sean, who, who do you think has the, the advantage here? I think we're going to see Final Testament go over because Bobby and the Street Profits need to split. Street Profits haven't been the same since they got with Bobby. And I do like Brian's idea about MVP coming back. So that's yeah. a possibility. A rebirth of the Hurt Business would do so much good because, I mean, just the way that things are going the way and you you are right like the street profits just feel so off they yep. they were one of the most one of the hottest acts one of the hottest teams in wwe for a long time yeah. they get with bobby lashley and like all that momentum just got sucked right out of the room and i think it's both of them because bobby was hot too yeah and he kind of went down when he got with them so it's like they brought each other down yeah for sure real quick we want to make mention we just had the trivia question, uh, who was T Tito Santana's opponent at WrestleMania 1? And uh, D Dennis Ryan? Dennis Ryan. Uh, was the first one with the answer. It was the executioner. Uh, Dennis, what we're going to have you do is text your address to the number 810-331-2829, and we will mail that card out to you. Uh, we appreciate you t tuning in here tonight as part of, of Fatal 4-Way. Now, moving on here is the match that I think could steal the show at WrestleMania on Sunday. One-on-one, -on -one, L.A. Knight is going to battle former WWE champion AJ Styles. On paper, Q, in a lot of respects, this is a dream match. This is a must-win for one and the other one is still trying to stay, I don't want to say relevant, but in the hunt of things as he is embarking on his own comeback. L.A. Knight, A.J. Styles, what's your take? Woo, man. Yeah, I'm excited for this one, too. And, man, A.J. is looking great, man. Yeah. <laughs> At 45, I mean, Best he's shape looking of his really life great. Right now. This is like the TNA dream match right here. So it's like uh, I feel like this match would have a lot more buzz if it was maybe five years ago because they really cooled down AJ. Mm -hmm. And it would be a bigger match for LA Knight if AJ was still as hot as he was about five years ago. So, But this is still a big dream match. And yes, LA Knight needs it. Uh, but you know what? AJ needs it as well. Right. Both of them need it. But I, I'm, I'm going to give it to LA Knight because of the momentum that he's on. He needs to really build on it. It's going to be something when you see, what, 65 or 70,000 people doing his entrance with him, the whole L.A. night thing. He makes a great point, Sean. This is, a, you know, I looked at it as a must win for L.A. night if, we're, if he's going to maintain that momentum or rebuild that, that momentum because, man, I, a couple of weeks ago, it seemed like he everything he touched was gold. Now he's kind of lost in the shuffle. Of course, a lot of this is happening on SmackDown, where everything is being overshadowed by The Rock. But uh, they tried to boost it up here earlier this afternoon with a big thing at the WWE World uh, co Convention Center thing that that they got going on. Big brawl broke out, you know, b bloody nose and, and and all this stuff. I look at this as the match that's going to steal the show. What, what's your take? Disagree. Okay. That's coming up. This match here, uh, AJ, so AJ doesn't need to win. He's established himself. L.A. Knight, he needs that push. He, he... L.A. Knight, yeah. I mean, he's, he's going over. That's yeah. all there is to it. 
so. we're, we're really should at this point for for sure all right um next up is the wwe women's title match between the winner of the women's royal rumble match we forget that for some reason but Bailey is going to challenge EO Sky for, for this Hollywood. And uh, this has to be Bailey's moment, right? She's earned her, she's she's earned it at this point. Uh, I, I don't have, know what else yeah. you could say. I, I, I have two things I want to, for one, I notice every time they introduce Cody Rhodes, they say the two time Royal Rumble winner, Cody Rhodes, man, when they, when they introduce Bailey, Bailey, I mean, they never acknowledge her as the Royal Rumble winner right. in her entrance. So that's that's one thing. But uh, I believe that this is Bailey's night. But I'm uh, I'm a little fearful because if they want to push this program to backlash, then I can see EO retaining in a shock win. But my pick is Bailey. Bailey has been overshadowed by this whole thing. Nobody, like, the fact that she has not been on any of the promotional material, why do we even have this Royal Rumble stipulation at this point? You put Bianca Belair on there, which is great. She's beautiful, she's popular, she's well known. Bailey won the damn match at the Royal Rumble to get this title shot. Do you think that, like, low-key, she's walking into this thing with a chip on her shoulder? Oh, she absolutely is. You know, the internet wrestling community is so vocal. And, you know, it's so funny. We're, we're saying a lot of things. She deserves it. She, and we talked about the internet wrestling community uh, on the hot tag and how the WWE is seemingly, like, with the Cody Rhodes thing in the main event, that the WWE is granting the IWC these things. This is one of those matches where I think WWE can be like, ha, we are going to pull a swerve on you, and they're going to wind up putting Bailey under, and we're going to have EO Sky retain as champ. Could very well see that, and, and, and to me, that would be a real shame. Yeah. You know, it, it really would. But you can make it, you know, we forget, like, there, there's so much happening at WrestleMania in a lot of aspects. It is the end of one season and the start of another one. But you still got to build backlash because that's going to be the next big, big event. And this match does could, because they haven't spent a whole lot of time promoting this or really advertising this or giving it its flowers, there could be enough there to build this as a backlash type type of rematch. All I want to say is, is if we're able to determine the matches on this entire card, and you know we're a hundred percent right, how boring is professional wrestling? This right. is why we yeah. need the WWE to pull swerves. Right. So, H, I know you watch. We've talked about this before. <laughs> Make some swerves happen. Who cares who you tick off? Yeah. It's it's about the anticipation and not knowing. Right. Yeah. yeah, okay, so we're taking it away from Bailey. Okay, give it to Bailey, take it away from someone else at this point. Like Cody. No Cody. No finishing the story. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's gonna be interesting to see how this one plays out, just like this next match here, because in a triple threat match. For the WWE United States Championship, Logan Paul will be defending the title against Randy Orton and Kevin Owens. I feel like this is your match that you think is going to st steal the show? Absolutely, 110%. Logan Paul is cocky and arrogant now. Imagine how he's going to be when he goes over on Randy Orton and KO. Where are you going here, Q? Hey, it's, it's, it's Logan Paul's to win. I think he holds on. And I, I agree with Brian. Like, I, he's going to hold on to that title. That's that's LA Knight's belt that he's holding on to. Yeah. So, that's that's what I see. Yeah, he's going to hold on to that. It's going to be a great match. I can see it. I can see it still in the show. The story here has been organic. They have intertwined all three of them. I mean, as well as, and I know people have an opinion about Kevin Owens being involved in this thing. 
but make no mistake about it, the storyline has 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 been written in in such a way that it makes sense. I don't look at this match like like I look at other matches on here. Be like, why are we doing this? Why? I don't right. understand the logic behind this. This one I do get. This one I understand. I didn't even take into consideration that S SummerSlam being in Cleveland is Logan Paul's hometown yeah. because you know we really want that oh yeah moment for uh, L.A. Knight against Logan Paul. He just like it writes itself. We wanted this match for for Mania, mm -hmm. but if you're not going to do it at Mania, you might as well do it on the second. You know, not the Royal Rumble, but. For SummerSlam, it's in a stadium. You need you need to sell it out. Having him still be the champion is probably your best bet here. So, Logan Paul, I you know he has to win this for for sure. Randy Orton is just there to um, be on the card. Yeah, <laughs> right. I mean, there, yeah. there's nothing else that can be. What more can he do? And Kevin Owens just looks sad in that graphic, like he already lost, so it's okay. <laughs> so. Well, I'm going to tell you what I don't want to see. <laughs> I don't want to see a repeat of WrestleMania 20, where we had uh, the best friends holding both of those titles. Uh, you know, mm. uh, you know, if you guys know what I'm talking about. Right. Uh, we see Kevin Owens win here, and we see Sami Zayn win number in uh, match oh. one. You see them holding up, having that Eddie Guerrero and uh, uh, the Crippler. Mm. I didn't even some, think about that. Think with the little confetti coming down. I mean, if, we don't need a recreation if, of that. If that, if that happens, I, I, not only am I quitting there's the Fatal 4-Way, I'm quitting wrestling. There, <laughs> there's your swerve for the night. Imagine you know. that. No, right. I don't want to. There's still time. You still have time to call in and be a part of the conversation. 810-331-2829 is the number. Call and be a part of the conversation. All right, it comes down to the two big matches here for, for WrestleMania. S Sunday, first off, it's finally going to happen. It's going to be World Heavyweight Champion Seth Rollins putting the title on the line against Drew McIntyre. This match has been lost in the shuffle. Sean and I have talked at nauseum about Drew McIntyre really has been... <laughs> has taken a back seat when he should be at the focal point. If you're going to give the man a world title match on WrestleMania, it needed to be more um, more in the spotlight here, Q. Um, these two are no strangers to each other. They've had great matches in the past, but I feel like with this, um, it has the potential to be their greatest you know, one-on-one -on -one match. But, man, the fact that Rollins is wrestling on Saturday... Yeah, kind of takes it away from me a little bit, which even fuels my desire more of wanting McIntyre to walk out with the world title. What's your take here? It, if it, it'll make McIntyre look real bad if he can't beat a guy with two bad knees that wrestled on a night before in a match against The Rock. I mean, we're, we're, we're what I see going down in this match is we have to remember, I, I believe that there might be four people involved in this match. You have CM Punk on commentary, That's which right. I believe CM Punk is going to try to cost, uh, cost Drew his win and accidentally cost Seth the win. Because remember, that, that beef was even hotter than Drew. Drew, yeah. was, Drew was inserted into that into that thing because of punk's injury yeah because yeah. of the injury so you, we still have to keep that hot between seth and punk and uh the fourth person we have to remember is the money in the bank winner who can be involved in this match i don't necessarily want to see it they really t they're trying to heat mac uh not mcintyre uh priest they're trying to heat them back up by having them beat up our truth but He's not really that hot in this picture. So I really don't want to see it, but I can see Drew definitely going over with the help of Punk. What do you think here? Does CM Punk pl play a role in this? No, absolutely not. Um, I, I believe he will cause distractions, but it won't cause Seth the match. I believe Drew goes over, but Drew's the worst for wear. Priest comes in. I do believe Priest is going to cash in. But I don't think Priest is going to take the title because that's going to cause more dissension within their group. Yeah. Yeah. 
And well, my, I mean, t to me, more importantly, they uh, Damian Priest is not on fire, and no. he, and he's not going. I you can think back to WrestleMania 31 when Seth Rollins cashed in Money in the Bank and walked out of there with the World Heavyweight Championship. Then what happened earlier that night? He lost to Randy Orton, but he. Damian Priest is not on the same level, I'm sorry, as nope. Seth Rollins by any stretch of the imagination. Okay, Joe, bear with us. I know we're on overrun, and I apologize, but it, it, it comes down to this match. This is what the whole thing is built around. Roman Reigns, Cody Rhodes, it happens for the second year in a row at WrestleMania. Does Cody finish the story? Hollywood Q will go with you first. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> I mean, we all pretty much established that we're not the biggest Cody fans, but at this time, I, I, I don't see them pretty much ruining what they have with him. Because they do have something with him. With You know, you got so many people that's behind him, and I do see him finishing, finishing this story and finally just getting it done because, really, I don't want to hear about finish the story. I cannot go another year talking about I got to finish this. Let's just finish. I wish the story was done last year. Right. You know, just finish this story, get it over with. Cody can lose that belt in, at SummerSlam. I mean, we don't need to see another long couple year reign with Cody. It's just, I say just finish the story. And like I said on the hot tag, this is going, last year was Infinity War where Thanos won. This year is the end game where the good guys win. That's Captain America right there. Look at him. Oh, boy. <laughs> Ryan out loud. That's I Captain just America. Not with you anymore here tonight. Sean, what's your take on Captain uh, America? Captain America. I absolutely love how Q compares wrestling to movies because <laughs> that's incredible. But my take on this is, is People relate to a sympathetic baby face, always trying to get sympathy. But the problem is, is you can get too much sympathy to where you get sick of this guy. So what happens yesterday? Now my bus caught on fire. And the only thing I got was the picture of my wife and my daughter and my WrestleMania boots. And you got to remember, my dad died, and I can't give the title to my mom, and I can't do this, and my panties are wet, and I got to go home and blow my nose. Yeah. No. The Cody crybabies, no. I want the internet wrestling community to be shut down. I want the WWE to do the right thing. Keep the rocket on Roman. Keep the belt on him until the end of time, or at least until Cody Rhodes goes back to AEW. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Finish the story, Jason. I hate <laughs> Cody Rhodes. I'm going to go to the bathroom and go take a Cody right now. <laughs> we have seen it all. What happened just now? <laughs> like, I was, I was mad at you at first. And then he's just going to... All right. I became the biggest heel on the show. Yeah, you did. <laughs> you you let this Hollywood persona gimmick just go right to your <laughs> damn head, but be that as it may. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we certainly appreciate you taking time out of WrestleMania weekend to, to give this show a watch. And we'll be on here throughout the night, so if you have additional comments, you can leave it on the Facebook feed at Orion ON TV. And for all the latest information on this show and all the other great shows that we have here on the PFC Entertainment Network, we encourage you to check out pfcnetwork.net, our official website. With that, uh, enjoy WrestleMania. It starts tomorrow night and it goes into Sunday. Both nights will begin at 7 p.m. on a particular bird-based streaming app. <laughs> <laughs> With that... <laughs> Go out and be awesome to yourselves and to each other. We'll be back here live in two weeks' time with the next installment of The Fatal 4-Way, live on Orion Neighborhood Television. Enjoy WrestleMania.